All right, here's our review video. Um, I already have all the answers up here, so um, I'm going to show you those first, and then I'll zoom in and we'll talk specifically about each problem. All right, so here's my proof for one, two, three, and question four. My answer is for five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten. Remember that we changed the directions on question ten. 11, again we change the directions, 12 and 13, 14 and 15, so the answer to 14 is written above the graph, 16 and 17. Okay, so let's talk about these. So if I look first um, at our first proof, remember that we always want to start with the given. I think you all are good there. Then we'll give our segment addition statement. Um, then I substituted values. Then I'm combining like terms, which we can you can call combine like terms technically, and I didn't do a good job of telling you this. It is technically substitution, um, but I'll take either of those examples tomorrow, either, either uh, reason that you want to give. Um, then I'm subtracting 31 from both sides, so that is subtraction of equality. Um, dividing both sides by two, so division. And then I'm substituting, remember they're asking for DE, so I've got to substitute this value for X back into what they said um, DE was equivalent to. So that has substitution, and then substitution one more time because seven is equivalent to negative six plus 13. Proof two is um, very similar, almost completely identical to that. Um, I have, been lazy and I stopped writing the given statements. So you really are just copying the information that is given to you above, whether it's given to you in a picture um, or as a statement. Notice on number two, also I drew a picture just so I could mentally see what was happening from the information that they gave us. Proofs three and four are also quite similar. Um, the difference is we're just talking about angle addition. So here for question two, um, or sorry, for statement two rather, it's just a statement of angle addition uh, there. Notice again, I didn't copy all three of those given statements, but you should have those copied down, um, especially for your test tomorrow. So then again, I've substituted values, equivalent values, um, I'm substituting again or combining like terms um, right here, right? 26 and negative 1 is 25. Adding to both sides and then subtracting. You may have done this in a different order. You may have subtracted 10 first and then added 5. That doesn't matter as long as the step you have matches um, the work that you've done on the left-hand side. And then division, so we're going to divide both sides by 5. Again, like I had done in 1 and 2, we're substituting values. Uh, to get our final answer, which is the measure of angle KLJ, because that's what they're asking for. And then question four is just very similar again. Uh, notice that the 106s cancel, so if I'm just speaking mathematically, these 106s um, cancel here, which leaves you with X equals 2X. So I'm going to subtract X from both sides, giving me X equals 0. And then I'm just going to substitute that value back in and get my value of IHG. On all of these problems, remember you could check by plugging in um, for all three missing parts, either the you know missing segments or missing angles, and just make sure that your math actually does work. All right, so questions five through eight, we're finding we're just finding the value of x, so no proof involved. You're literally just trying to solve. So question number five, um, this is an example of complementary. So remember that. Uh, that terminology, complementary, means they add to equal 90. So that's how I've set this up. And then simple algebra will give me x equals 19. Question number six, uh, this is an example of linear pair or supplementary. And again, simple algebra will give me x equals 25. Um, again, on seven, this is an example of linear pair or supplementary, so I'm going to add the two angles together and make them equal 180. Uh, simple algebra is going to give me x equals 61. 
And then question eight, this was the new vocabulary we kind of touched on and made a big deal about today, vertical angles. So vertical are those that are across from each other and they are congruent. So we can set 46, 46 equal to 5x plus 1. And then simple algebra will give me that x equals 9. Uh, remember on all of these problems, these top problems 5 through 8, you could plug those x values back in and make sure that they give you true statements. All right, um, 8, sorry, not 8, uh, 9, 10, and I think 11 are all just going to ask us to complete different transformations. So I'm not really as worried about you all at 9. You seem pretty good on that. So all I did was I plotted the original figure called the pre-image. And then my translation, if it gives me along a vector, that means to move, um, it's an X and a Y uh, value that they're giving us there. So they want us to move left 3 and up three. So that's exactly what I did. Moved left three and up three. Make sure you do that with all points so that the two figures remain congruent. Remember, translations are an example of rigid motion so that these two um, figures, the pre-image and the image, should be congruent to one another. That's a lot of geometry vocabulary. Make sure you know um, all of what I'm saying there. All right, question 10, um, reflection, and we changed this problem to be across y equals negative x, so that's the red line that I have drawn there. Uh, I'm going to talk for a minute about this. Remember, when we reflect, we have to walk like perpendicularly to the line. So if, if this slope down here is negative x, then the slope, or sorry, negative 1, then the slope I want to walk is positive 1. So one thing I think I showed some of you is if you pick a point, so I'm going to start with W here. I'm going to just make a line that runs perpendicularly to that line of reflection. And I'm going to make that line run through every single point. So I've done that for W. I'm going to count up one, over one for V until I get all the way across. Down one, backwards one, until I get all the way across. Same for Y. Okay, and then... I don't know if it, it kind of looks messy because you're looking at a lot of things, but I want you to see that W, like if I count on this green line, W is only half a space away from um, my line of reflection. So if I jump a half on the other side, that's how I found where W prime was. Y was one, two, and a half spaces. Here, I'll draw that out in a different color. All right, that's one, two, and a half jumps. So i got to do that same pattern on the other side, half, one, and two. That's how I found this new coordinate. Oh, for x. I'm sorry, I can't see what the original problem said. All right. If I do the same thing for v and w, so let me erase those originals so I'm not looking, so it's not looking so messy. All right, for v and w, um, I'll count v first. So if I'm counting along the green line to the line of reflection, that's one, and a half jumps. So I'm going to go a half and one on the other side to find um, its new image point. The same idea for y across this green line that's perpendicular. One, two jumps to this line of reflection. So I'm going to do two jumps on the other side to find y. Now I know that looks messy and some of you can count that without all of that, but um, I'm just trying to help you make sense of what it is you're seeing there so that you can get the correct uh, image in the end. All right, let's look at 11. So 11, kind of same idea. This one may be a little less um, messy, so I'll just kind of do one at a time. So again, I've got um, this negative x line. I don't think that's the reflection that I gave to you all. I think we were supposed to do across y equals x. All right. Put a star in this that you want me to go over this one before your test tomorrow because I don't think I changed that correctly on your notes. I think this is supposed to be across the line y equals x. Um, don't fix what you have done. Just know that this answer that I have is not correct, and we'll check it together tomorrow. Okay, question 12. Um, so on 12 through 13, we're just describing what is happening. So 12, it's very easy to see when it's on a graph that this is a translation. There is nothing against you using graph paper tomorrow. Um, even if I don't give that to you, you are always welcome to use graph paper um, or plain paper on any test that I give you throughout the semester. So um, 
I'm literally just mapping B to B, C to C. This is an example of a um, translation. And we, you can draw the vector if you want to so that you notice which direction it's going. Um, so from B to B prime, that is right three and down two. Remember, you wanna do the X component and then the Y component anytime you write a vector. 13, uh, I'm just matching like W to W, V to V, U to U, what's happening. And if I look at that kind of long enough, I start to notice the pattern that the X's are increasing by two and the Y's are increasing by four. So if we write that in vector notation, that's um, with those angled brackets, two, four, the vector two, four. If you write the other notation, X, Y, that's gonna be um, X plus two, and y plus four. But pay attention, I'll probably ask for vector notation tomorrow because that's what's been different this week from last week. All right, um, question 14. So 14 here, we've got a reflection going on. Uh, you're just trying to, if you don't see the line right away, I think in class this week what we did was we connected the two um, corresponding points and looked for the midpoint. And then obviously this midpoint's right here and you can kind of do the same thing with H and that's gonna give you this line of reflection. And I know that line is Y equals X there. Question 15, again a reflection. This one's a little weird because um, we didn't talk about any specifically like this, but you can do the same thing. Map Y to Y and look for the middle. X to X and look for the middle. W to W prime, right? V to V prime. And when you do that, you get this line that cuts across. Remember lines that cut through the y-axis are y equals lines, and this is cutting through the y-axis at negative one, so that's y equals negative one. Question 16, I do not know why they didn't line them up for us. That was very frustrating, but notice um, that I've kind of paired them with which they go, those that they go with. So like j to J prime, right? Um, K and K prime go together, L and L prime. So what I'm noticing is that um, the difference in J is that the X is changing signs, and um, the same with all of these. So I've written, first I just kind of wrote the notation from last week, XY maps to negative XY. And then I remember that's a reflection across the Y axis. That's what that means. Now tomorrow, remember, you're allowed to have graph paper. So if you wanted to plot all four of those, you could plot them and then re realize that it's a reflection across the Y instead of just mapping with the coordinates. All right. Um, and then 17, very similarly, uh, I just kind of mapped that. Again, you could graph them to see what was happening. On this one, this is one of those rules I actually do remember because notice what's happening. The X is becoming Y and the Y is becoming X, saying that they were, were equal to each other. So that's why this is a reflection across Y equals X. Um, but again, you could graph that if you needed to. So that's all I have. There's not anything on the back. You come in tomorrow, tell me what it is we need to maybe spend a few last moments on, and then we will take your test.